Hey, what's up, guys? Oh my god, I'm still... I'm still getting used to how quickly that number goes up. It's really... There are numbers that are way higher than I've ever seen. 451 of you, hi. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Saw you at the Rogers Cup on Wednesday. Awesome. I'm going back, actually. I'm going back on Sunday to watch the uh, final. Hopefully, Serena will, will be playing again. But uh, I had the opportunity to meet her, which is pretty insane, considering she's like an inspirational athlete, and I'm just some guy. Um, so that was cool. Um... What's up? It's a really good question, Aaliyah. Not much. Um, had a bit of a weird start to the day because I watched this YouTube video of people talking about how ugly I was. Um, definitely not something that I'm sure a lot of you guys have, um, <laughs> have uh, experienced. But um, maybe you have experienced adversity at some point in your lives, whether it's doubt as to your ability to do your job or just naysayers, bullying, whatever have you. And um, sometimes I think we really let those voices get to us and define us and we start to buy into um, what people say that we are and I wanted to I didn't want to fish for compliments so don't worry I, I really really appreciate all of the wonderful comments um, saying that I'm 10 out of 10 and I, I see you Olivia um, that's cute I'm blushing no but I, I, I really wanted to turn this into a teachable moment because we all have experienced these moments in our lives, albeit probably not on the uh, scale of like a video with almost 100,000 views of people rating me. Um, wonderful journalistic integrity, by the way, I might add. Um, but really, for those of you who have experience with this or have just like, listen, I've been... I've been second guessed at every single step of my career, right? Like people have questioned my, you know, maybe my looks, maybe my skills, my ability to act, my ability to do other, like to write. I've been rejected from, I've been rejected from auditions. We, we don't book 95% of the auditions that we go out for. And um, we're constantly being told that we're not enough. And what needs to survive, what needs to persevere despite all of this noise is this overarching belief that we are enough. And um, I believe that I am enough. And I am never going to let anybody take this moment away from me because it's kind of crazy, but um, I'm going to be a Marvel superhero. And I believe that I can do it. I have the utmost faith in my abilities. Um, and a couple of people trying to bring me down is frankly not going to succeed. We're going to make a great movie. I know this from the bottom of my heart. And um, it's been really disconcerting seeing some of the comments that have come particularly from China from the East and, and not to say that it's unwarranted or, you know, I, I totally wanted to address it. I totally understand in a lot of ways where they come from because I am an unfamiliar face. Frankly, a lot of people have not seen me before, aren't familiar with my work and um, aren't familiar with anything that I've done past a couple of outdated photos um, of me. But... Um, yeah, I, I think it speaks to a greater disconnect between those of us who were raised in the West and those of us who were raised in the East. Somewhere along the way, we lost maybe compassion, empathy for one another. We, 
I mean, we are very, very different. We come from very, very different parts of the world and uh, grew up in very separate cultures. But at, at, to some degree, we're also bound by our shared heritage. And so what I hope this movie does truly, truly is to help bring us closer together. And um, it's certainly, even in this process of learning in the ways that we're different from, yes, from our beauty standards to even, you know, just the way that we view each other. Um, it's been really eye-opening. And, you know, I know that a lot of the people in China who are concerned about this movie are concerned because the source material was seeped in very Orientalist and very racist elements. I think, okay, I bought a bunch of comics, um, so I'll just show you real quick what they look like. Hang on one second. So, okay, so this is this is one of the penult the penultimate. No, this is one of the um, like biggest comics in the story of the original series of the Master of Kung Fu. But it's him. So this is his father Fu Manchu, obviously a very racist caricature, and um, and this is a speech bubble where Shang Chi is like, and now my father, you die. So basically, in the comic books. Um, Shang-Chi is half Chinese and he basically um, kills his father who is fully Chinese and um, and is almost representative of, of the whole culture of China and I don't have to tell you that that's clearly problematic where you have a comic where a guy is essentially rejecting the Asian part of himself now yes he, he is a villain I mean obviously you can tell he's the most caricatured looking villain very unimaginative, obviously, born of the, again, the 1970s, a time where representation of Asian people was not well-developed, obviously. And, um, yeah, I mean, we are coming up on 50 years since then. And um, without talking about our movie, which obviously I can't do... I can assure you, we're totally aware of the problematic themes that comic books like this um, put forth. And um, I have every faith in our team, myself included, that we will not let this movie become this. Um, those of us who were born here in the West completely understand why that's problematic and completely understand why it's unacceptable and I feel like a lot of a lot of us in the East aren't understanding that and they feel like maybe we over here just try to play into you know just try to be white passing or white adjacent and, and really just try to please the white man which is not true I mean we have our own battles that we've been fighting since forever our fight to be seen, our fight for representation, it's maybe not something that our friends in the East are super cognizant of because they've grown up in an environment where all of the content that they consume is of other, you know, of other Asian people, of other Chinese people. And um, obviously that hasn't been the case for us. For us growing up, you know, we really haven't had a lot of representation on screen. When we have, it has either been whitewashed or severely caricatured, a lot of side characters, a lot of really unfortunate representations of Asian people. Now, I am a part of a wave of actors, writers, creatives who are Asian American, Asian Canadian, who are working so, so hard to change that because we are fighting for quite literally our right to be seen and our right to belong. And, um, you know, I think that the issue of representation is one that is maybe a little bit more familiar to those of us who grew up in the West, but not to say that people in the East don't feel it as well, because we have never, you know, whether you're Chinese born in China or Chinese born in um, in Canada or the States, we've all never had an MCU superhero 
in the title in in the lead role and so this is this is new territory and this is barrier shattering for a lot of us you know and um in that way i hope that we can kind of use that common ground to find a little bit more understanding with each other i suppose um do y'all know what i'm i'm kind of talking about here i'm gonna go through and just double check the comments because i'm sorry i've been talking a lot i I do want to know what you think but um are people really con- concerned about Marvel making a racist movies? Uh, about Marvel making a racist movie? I can say for sure the research that I've done, the comments that I've seen on Chinese social media that have been forwarded to me, um, are uh, people are very concerned. Uh, a, with the source material. B, even with the Mandarin, because his name is the Mandarin, um, people are a little bit worried. And I think it's very understandable because obviously, you know, we're careful with the information that we release just because we don't want to just give away the story what the, because why would why would we do that um but at the same time you know i i hope that audiences can trust us and trust that we are just as much culturally sensitive um if not more so because of our whole issue with representation in the past and um we we will not let any movie become this which as you so aptly uh pointed out is from the 1970s and almost 50 years old so yeah so my my message to to i guess our chinese audiences who are concerned would be um please trust us and um Apart from that, I can't give away any specific details about the movie, um, but uh, but I, I can say that we're we're really excited to do it right, and we will do it right because because we have an amazing writer and director attached, and um, and Marvel is just an amazing amazing company to work for. I mean, even in the very limited time that that um, I've been employed by them they've shown themselves to be so sensitive culturally, um, so inclusive and so warm and so open to, to hearing diverse uh, viewpoints and, and, and perspectives. So, yeah. We're really, really excited. And, um, you know, a lot of people have asked me how I've dealt with, like, quote-unquote, the pressure. And I do want to say, um, the most pressure that I was ever under in my entire life was in the one and a half days after I did the screen test and before Kevin called me um, to tell me that I got the part. I mean, that was a pressure that I, like, that was debilitating pressure because I wanted so badly to, to give my parents... Back, to pay my parents back for all of their sacrifices and all of the hard work that they put in just to be able to raise me in this country. And uh, I, I mean, in, in, in comparison, I mean, I know that, you know, a lot is at stake, but in comparison, this is, this is fun. This is actually getting to go to work and, and to, to do the damn thing, you know? Um, I think what was most anxiety inducing for me was not knowing whether I was going to have the chance. And now that I do, I have every intention of absolutely killing it. So yeah, for the 450 or so of you guys that are watching, um, yeah, you can, you can rest assured. I mean, I, I, I know the stakes, I know what's at hand and, um, I won't let you down, you know? Anyway, um, (laughs) so this video, which I have to call out because it's just, it really is not the most journalistically, it's just like, it's just this guy and he's going to people on the street in China and he's asking them like, frankly, like really leading questions about whether or not I'm ugly 
And look, for some, I know that I'm not like, look, I am no, uh, I am no, God, who's so, I am no, who do I think is like so freaking handsome? I don't know. I'm no Chris Hemsworth, you know? Um, I, I know there's lots of um, actors, Asian actors, white, black actors that are, that would completely destroy me in the looks department. Um, taller, better looking, double eyelids, because apparently that's a huge thing. Um, but I do know that uh, there is nobody on this earth more suitable to play this role than me. I can say that with 100% certainty. There's never been a single ounce of doubt in my mind of that. So, yeah. So going back to this, this video, it's really interesting because it really highlighted to me the differences between Eastern and Western standards of beauty. So, for example, so I, I guess I guess some of the um, the I don't know I want to say controversy, but the um, opinion surrounding casting me, people were like, "Well, this guy they cast a guy who was their stereotypical Chinese guy." Um, you know, so they were like, "Oh, single eyelid." I think they mentioned some other facial features that I'm not really sure of. Um, I'll have to go back and, and, and re-watch the video. But um, it, it was really interesting to me because, um, yeah, I, I guess, look, this is coming from a really privileged position, but I haven't been called ugly all too many times in my life. And so it was very kind of jarring. And I mean, nor have I been called particularly gorgeous, but um, it, it was kind of like, oh, okay. I guess I'm ugly then. No, um, yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit like weird. And then I, I thought the video was going to. I thought they were going to do a bunch of interviews and then talk about this kind of very interesting dichotomy in beauty standards, especially when you know people in the East seem to favor um, facial features that are traditionally Caucasian, which is, I, I think, sp speaks to kind of overall. I mean, I mean. I speak all the time about how those of us who are raised here, Asian Americans, Asian Canadians, have self-hating tendencies sometimes because we were, were othered from a very young age because of the way we look and so therefore we learn to kind of resent that part of ourselves and, and a lot of the speaking that I do and the engaging with audiences is about specifically undoing that in us and being unapologetically Asian and being more proud of our heritage and, and not letting those people take rob us of our cultural pride. And, and it's really interesting to me to see how those, that messaging may have also bled in to Chinese people in China. I don't want to speak too much about it because I'm not too familiar with it, but it is interesting that the most prized facial features are traditionally like fairer skin or bigger eyes um, are like the, the, the Eastern standards of beauty. Now, I don't think I was cast because I was, I'm Hollywood's, uh, idea of what a stereotypical Asian looks like. I'm not what a stereotypical quote unquote Asian person looks like. Um, I, I kind of actually thought that my un uniqueness was why I was cast. And, and also because I'm an actor and there are skills associated with that and perhaps I was the most fit actor for the role but uh, that that video I will say did not leave a lot of room for nuance I really thought it was gonna go in a place where they were going to comment on these larger issues that were very very interesting and very valid and uh, nope it was just like <laughs> talking about ugliness I guess anyway I hope all of your days are going a little bit better than mine. Not that, not that I'm letting this affect me, but I'm just saying, like, I hope none of y'all were called ugly today. Um, as many times as I was. This one girl, literally deadass, she was like, I rate him a 3.5. And I was like, a 3.5? Really? I don't know, man. Anyway. Um... Thank you uh, so much for, for those of you who, first of all, have been tuning in since like the very beginning. I haven't forgotten about you. Um, obviously, I used to do these lives a lot more often, but now that my life is 
crazy. I haven't really had a chance, but I did want to. Um, I just did want to, to just kind of talk a little bit because obviously these thoughts are on my mind, and and it's like I don't know. I, I guess some people might kind of shy away from responding, but that's never really been my personality. I've always been the kind of guy to kind of charge headfirst and thing into things. For better or for worse, I'm just I'm just like a hard headed, really like, you know, look at this scared, stare discomfort in the face and just go at it sort of thing. Um, and so yeah, I I hope that I could teach that I could turn a turn this into a teachable moment, where you know in all of y'all's lives, um, whether you're getting doubted for your performance or whether people are reject, you know whether people are bullying you or just telling you that you can't do something like you can't let those people win because if you did then you would just be letting other people define your life and why would you do that you only get one life and you don't have time to you, you don't have time to get distracted by other people i mean what do they know about you what do they know about your struggles or how far you've come and, and what right do they have to totally derail your life? So don't let those people in. Just don't. And, and I'm not saying, like, never read a piece, you know, like, completely shut out those voices. Sometimes it's really hard. But for me, it's always been about understanding that those voices exist and almost, like, living with it. Li living with the discomfort and embracing the discomfort and saying, okay, there's going to be people who don't feel this way and that's fine. You know? And it is fine. And I hope that for all of you guys listening, whether it's, you know, whether you experience doubt in your jobs or in your, you know, in your lives, for whatever reason, don't let that affect you even the least. Okay, cool. Um, so a lot of you guys are just tuning in now. Clearly, I, I just spent a lot of time talking about the Chinese market and how... Uh, Asians who grew up here versus people who grew up in Asia slash China are very different for a lot of reasons. Now, uh, a lot of the controversy, a lot of their concerns are very valid, and I totally understand. Um, and I spent a lot, of, a bit of time talking about them. I'm sure I'll get to talk about them again. But uh, the bottom line is, you know, we have been caricatured in many ways, in TV, in media, and, and Shang-Chi, a comic that was created in the 70s in the midst of this kung fu craze, is no different, as you can see, by not only, you know, Fu Manchu is clearly caricatured, but even Shang-Chi is a little, you know, is, is a little problematic in a way. Um, what, I said, what I said a few minutes ago, and I'll say one more time, is that we're aware of it. And those of us who grew up in the West are extremely sensitive to it because we've experienced representational issues and identity issues from day one. And we've had to struggle with that and come to terms with it and fight for better representation. And so that is a fight that I'm more than happy to continue into this movie. Um, and, uh, and, you know, my wonderful, wonderful team uh, Dave Callahan, our screenwriter who's half Asian, uh, Daniel Destin, Destin Daniel Creighton, uh, our director who's also half Asian, are, are all very, very aware and, um, and we're going to attack it and we're going to make a great movie and it's, it's going to be awesome. So, yeah. That's it for me. I'm going to go. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Remember, do not let the voices get to you. Don't be derailed. Have an unwavering focus on what you need to do because we only get one life and it's too precious for you to allow other people's opinions to keep you from what you want to do. That's all. Okay, cool. I love you guys. Thank you so much again for watching. And uh, I'll see you soon. Okay.